Greetings. Welcome. So in this lecture, I'm going to talk about improper integrals with a discontinuous integrand. So this is kind of by example. And what we're doing is instead of having that one of the bounds is infinite, we're going to have that one of the bounds is somewhere where the function is undefined, but we're still going to do this by taking a limit. So let's look at the integral uh, from, and we're going to want to go from 1 to 2. of, and then I'm going to take the function 1 over x minus 1 dx. Okay, and you'll notice that the problem here is if I plugged in 1 into here, I would get 0 on the bottom, so this would be infinite. Okay, so this is definitely one where that is a problematic brown. And then we're going to handle this very similarly as to how we did in the other circumstance of an infinite bound where we're just going to take a limit. Okay, so this is going to equal the limit as, and then I'm going to want to go, so t is going to want to go to 1 from the, and we kind of talked about this in the last lecture, that I'm going to want to do the right-hand side, and uh, why do I want to do the right-hand side? Okay, so let's kind of look at this. So what am I looking at? I'm looking at the interval from 1 to 2, right? And I'm going to want to approach this from, I want to stay within the interval, so I want to approach this from this side, okay? So that's why I'm choosing this. And what I'm going to get, so I'm going to take this limit, and now I'm going to do it of the integral, and I'm going to do a similar thing to what I did before. So I'm going to take the integral, and then I'm going to replace this 1, which is my problematic bound, with a t, and I'm going to keep my 2, okay? Um, and then I'm just going to keep this exact same integral here. So this is still 1 over x minus 1 dx. Okay? Um, and this is one of these integrals that, that I tell students you can't lawnify, and this is a rare case where you can. Um, you should properly do a substitution here, but because the derivative of x minus 1 is just 1, it doesn't actually change anything in this circumstance. So this is going to equal the limit as t approaches 1 from the right-hand side, and then I'm just going to go ahead and take, right, uh, the integral of that, and using a substitution, I would get x minus 1, and then I'm going to go from t to 2. Yeah. Okay, and then this is going to equal, I'm going to put a line down the middle for myself because I'm kind of going to go through two examples. This is going to equal, and then I'm going to get the limit as... So this equals the limit as t approaches 1 from the right-hand side of uh, the natural log of, so we put in 2 and we get 1 here, so we get the natural log of 1 minus the natural log of t. Okay? Um, which, sorry, t minus 1. Absolute valued. Okay? Um, and then this is just going to equal, well, this here is going to go to uh, 1. Sorry, it's going to go to 0. And this one, as I approach 1, so how do I actually figure out what this is? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, okay, so since, right, since I have the t, is going to approach 1 from this side, what do I do? I put in values that are, uh, let me put this cap on here, I put in values that get closer and closer to 1, right, but are greater than 1, okay? So since this, we're looking at, um, so we look at values that are greater than 1, but closer and closer to 1. And this is, again, one of these examples 
Um, so this is to figure out the limit. And this is again one of these examples where I, it really helps to draw the picture so that you realize that what I'm doing, I'm looking at values that are greater than one but very close to one. Okay, so I'm looking at these values as I approach here. Okay, and then what ends up happening is, well, if I'm greater than one but close to one, I'm going to get something that's very close to zero when I subtract off one, but is positive. And so that's going to end up giving me that, um, I'm, so I'm basically approaching the natural log of zero, which we kind of have seen in other lectures as kind of minus infinity. Uh, so we're going to end up getting plus infinity. Right. Um, so this is kind of going to go to, this is going to approach ln of zero, which isn't really anything, <laughs> except that we would say that it's minus infinity, and then you would pick up an infinity from that. Okay, so the picture of what's going on here um, is that I have, so the graph, so this is like my uh, y-axis and my x-axis, and my function as I approach 1, so the, the value that I'm replacing is 1 here, so I'm looking at what's happening at 1. Okay, and I'm approaching it from this side. And my graph looks like, so I get, so this is, uh, y equals 1 over x minus 1. Right. I'm not sure why I wrote it on both sides, but you can kind of see um, that this is the graph that actually kind of dips like this um, in case it's not super visible. Okay? And you can actually see that you believe this, that as I approach from this side, um, well, the graph itself is going to go up to infinity, but it's going to turn out actually also that that area does. Um, but it does tell you that that sign must be correct because that's kind of a positively signed area. Okay. So now... Let's look at an, let's do another example. So I want to do an example where I'm going to go uh, the integral from, and now I'm going to go from minus 4 up to 2 of, and then I'm going to take dx over x plus 2 squared. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at this. So now I'm in a circumstance where, uh, and maybe I'll kind of draw this here. I'm going to do this in a similar circumstance where my interval looks like I have a, a minus 4 on this side. And then on the other side, I have this 2. And again, I want to approach it staying within the interval, so I need to do it from this side. And this is a side that we would say this is a 2 minus way of approaching it. Okay, or a left-hand limit. And so, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment, but for now it's just in order to figure out which limit we're taking. So this is going to equal the limit as, and so now we want to approach from the left-hand side. So we have t approaches 2 from the left-hand side. Uh, and then we're just going to take, right, so the integral from minus 4 to t of... Oh, this should be a dx, should be in yellow, probably. So it's like 1 over that, okay, um, of, and then I have 1, so let's actually kind of write it like this is 1 over x plus 2 squared dx. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and integrate. So I'm going to get the integral. Okay, so this is going to equal the limit as t approaches, right, let's just keep this, and then I want to take, um, so I'm going to get, if I actually integrate that, I'm going to get uh, minus 1 over x plus 2, oh, yeah, okay, we'll just do this in yellow, minus 1 over x plus 2, okay, and then I'm going for my bounds, which are from minus 4 to t, so I'm still using those bounds.
Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. Um, or to take the, yeah, so I'm going to plug in my bounds now. So I'm going to get the limit. But I haven't, actually, I'm not ready to take a limit yet because I haven't kind of expanded that all the way out yet. Um, of, and I'm going to get, so I, I'm going to do this like I normally do. So I want to take minus 1 over and then just do my parentheses here. Minus, minus 1 over parentheses plus 2, like this. And the top bound is a, is a t, and the bottom bound is a minus 4. Okay, so I have a minus 4 and a 2, so that's a minus 2, minus 1, so this should be 1 half. So I'm taking out uh, minus 1 half here, so this is, so, right, so I'm going to get this combined with that, so I'm subtracting off a 1 half, okay? Um, and now we need to kind of figure out, so what are we doing with this over here? Okay, um, so how do we, we compute this? So since... T is going to approach like this. Okay, we try values that are, so now we want to try values in the interval. We're approaching from this side, so I want to try values in this interval, but I want them to be, so I want them to be less than 2, but very close to 2. Okay, so I'm going to try, so try values, so we look at values. That are less than two so that they stay within the interval but close to um oh this is supposed to be a minus two this is uh i'm very sorry about this this should be a minus two bum, bum, bum. that minus needs to show up here that minus needs to show up here where else does it show up here and here okay i think i got it everywhere okay um so this should be less than minus two Okay, um, but close to minus 2. Right, to figure out the limit. Okay, well, what happens if I put in things, so minus 2, so that's kind of like having 0 on the bottom, um, but the tricky part is actually to figure out, um, right, whether this is going to be positive or negative. So if I'm less than minus 2, that actually ends up making this negative. So I get negative over negative, which is positive, but I'm approaching 0 on the bottom, so I'm going to get positive infinity there. Okay? Um, so this is going to equal... Oh, so I didn't kind of point out there that this is plus infinity, so divergent. And this one also is going to end up giving us plus infinity, right? Because this approaches... So uh, this is going to approach positive infinity because the bottom is approaching zero, but with negative values and the top is negative. Okay, so I'm going to end up getting this uh, positive infinity here, and the, these constants kind of don't affect infinity. Okay, um, and the picture that I want to draw then looks like... So I have this minus 2 here. Right, and I'm approaching from this side, so minus, yeah, okay. So it's okay that there are kind of two minuses going on there. Um, and then this is going to, so as I approach this, I'm going to look like this. Okay, um, which also gives me an indication of the sign. This is a positive area circumstance. So this is y equals 1 over x plus 2 squared. Okay, um, so this is my x-axis and my y-axis. And what I was actually looking at was this area um, underneath, right? So I'm looking at this area over here. Okay, and this one over here, I'm looking at this area over here. Okay, and so what I'm doing is I'm approaching, I'm well, I, I start out, oops, I'm going actually, so in this case, I'm going up to 2. So what I'm, yeah, and in this case, I'm starting at minus 4. So the area I'm looking at starts at minus 4. And so what I'm in doing is increasing my t. So I take finite area, 
but my t approaches here and so it ends up giving an infinite area okay okay so great um, so in each of these circumstances, what I'm doing is I'm looking at an area um, under a particular interval where actually the function in, in, in approaches something infinite um, as I get to the end of that interval. And I do a very similar thing that instead of it having it be infinity that I'm kind of going out towards, I'm just approaching that endpoint of the interval. So it's like I'm looking at this interval, then this, then this, then this. So I'm just replacing that integrand with um, a limit, okay, so a t, and then I'm taking the limit. To figure out, I really recommend drawing it to figure out which direction you're going in and also to keep track of when you're taking the limit, whether you're going to, you know, what kind of values you're putting in. So here, I want to stay within the interval, so this is, I'm doing a right-hand limit, okay, so I'm looking at values that are greater than 1 but close to 1, okay, when I start plugging in to kind of figure out, a lot of times the tricky part is figuring out the sign, okay. Um, and so because this is greater than one, this is positive in here, but I'm approaching kind of zero. Um, and then this is a similar kind of thing where here I'm on this interval here. So I'm approaching from this side. So I take values that are less than minus two, but close to minus two. When I put those in, I would get on the bottom a negative that would go with a negative here and would give me something positive, but the bottom's approaching zero. So this is like positive infinity. Okay. Um, so those are the only tricky parts, right? Um, so you're taking the interval, and again, I'm like looking at something close to here and then approaching and looking at that area. Okay, great. So I hope that makes some sense, and I will see you in the next lecture.